peace be upon you in the name of God and peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, the Arabian Prophet. Dear Excellencies, dear attendees, dear participants, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Salaamu Alaikum. I would like at the beginning to thank the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan for hosting such an important summit and to the organization Arab Brains for organizing this distinguished event. I have uh, prepared an intervention to talk about uh, the uh, events or the efforts, sorry, of the Arabia, Arab League uh, for research and um, culture, but I found myself like I like to talk about out of the frame that I have prepared according to what I have he heard for since yesterday and this morning. I would like to talk about some of the important is issues in the Arabian land. The first thing is to diagnose the problem and knowing the solution is the first solution actually. As Arabs, according to my point of view, we are working in two contradicted paths and two different paths and both they are negative. A part of us is always blaming themselves and being harsh on themselves to prove that or to underestimate their will and this is something that is not required. The other half of the Arab people, they are always trying to inflate the results and to exaggerate which will lead them to be relaxing and to be proud and to, and to talk about the illusion of that we have reached but we did not. So we would like here to ask the logic and the reality to work in the middle between the two paths. We should also be aware and we should concentrate on the main objective of the educational systems. There are so many things that are confusing our sound thinking or our sound mentality when we are looking at the marginal issues that are becoming essential and they would becoming an obstacle in front of us and becomes the obstacle for creating the person and building the capacity of that person who is able to become a good citizen beneficial for his country. Here I agree with what my colleague from Iraq, uh, Iraq said, that we are confusing the two concepts, which is the education and the, uh, the raising. Because we are translating two words in Arabic into uh, between the two words. The word terbiya in Arabic means the upbringing, and the education means ta'lim. So when we say ministry of upbringing and education. We are always confusing between the two parts. Yes, we are taking care of the first part, which is the educational process. That we are, that's why we are here. But we should also apply different theories regarding the upbringing. We are applying the Western mentalities. But also, we should know that we have our own traditions for the upbringing or the breeding. Uh, sorry, the upbringing of the uh, generations. We have our own traditional uh, factors. This is a start, and it's a question. We should all try to find the answer. We have also been talking about the coping with the development and the technology. This is a theoretical discourse, and this is not reasonable, because we all know that the changes in the educational systems cannot be surprising or cannot be between a day and a night. It sh should not be a surprising process. Any change in the educational system should be implemented within 10 to 12 years until we see the outcomes. And because we know that the breakthrough of the technology field is very fast, is very rapid, and it should be aware 
we should be aware that it's impossible for any Arab country to cope with the technology because that's impossible and it is not reasonable. Also, this leads us to another question, actually. This leads us to another question. Now, the question is, do you think that the technology and the development of the technology should define the educational system in our countries, the educational and the upbringing system in our countries? This is another question. The educational systems have objectives and different mechanisms to be implemented. The objectives are somehow constant, which is building the capacity of a good person that is considered to be beneficial to the community and to the nation as a whole. But the mechanisms can be variable. The humanity witnessed a lot of changes in mechanisms where the objectives never changed since the beginning of the creation and the appearance of Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, the human being started to learn. There are so many evidences that Adam, peace be upon, peace be upon him, he was the first learner because in Quran he was the first person to learn the names of the things. So the objective is not changing, but the mechanisms are changing. Since the beginning of a chain of a creation, the traveling has existed, but the mechanisms changed. It. Changed, sorry, the travel did not change. It's it's a method of of changing the lifestyle, but it is how to travel. This what has changed. So when we are talking about developing the educational system. It's uh, changing the mechanisms, but not the objectives. Sometimes we are heading to comparisons that are injustice between our universities and schools and the universities and the schools of another advanced countries where they are ahead of us in tens of years. Because the objective of a school in an Arabian country, of the poor Arabian countries, or a, a university maybe, it's not be necessary, for example, similar to a university in Finland. And the comparisons are based on quantitative indicators. Some of them that was presented that were presented according to the average of the students, a number of students were in the classrooms and the number of the computers in school. This is all connected to the economy of the country. So we have wrong comparisons here, where a country, Arabian country, a hundred dollars is considered to be the annual rate of their work, and compared to compare to another rich country. So consequently, we should not be leaded by these comparisons that are re not reasonable, and we sh they should be reflected by another inputs or indicators. And what is actually, we have a shortage in, in the Arabian arena. It is not, we don't, we do not have Arabian or Arabian or regional indicators. That's why whenever we have our own indicators, we should talk about the international ones. There's another discourse regarding the Arabian content and the economy of the knowledge, which was raised by my colleague from Tunis or Tunisia, that the Arabian content is very weak. And I think, in my point of view, and I definitely believe that the reason is very bold and clear that most of the Arabian universities are adopting the teaching process with other language than the Arabian language in, in English or in other languages. Maybe this is the main thing for the weakness. Most of the countries that we are comparing with Singapore, uh, Germany, other countries, they are all teaching in their own languages. But in our universities, we are teaching in another language which is resulted by having a big gap between the best people in the university and the other segments of the community. And this will never help us until we change the educational process into Arabic. Maybe this is the, the main key in opening the port to the knowledge. 
and talking about changing the educational systems cannot be sound if we are not talking about the national system for innovation. The educational system is a part of the national system. So developing it, reforming it, is asking us to change the whole uh, system. I was honored to meet an international expert. Hua, uh, he was from Peru, Fernando del something I did not hear actually. He said that the West advanced because they had technology, but we have discovered that this was not true. The Western people became advanced because they knew how to state their legislations. I think he was right. We should reconsider. We should reconsider our legislations in order to reform the relationship between every component in the Arabian countries. So whenever we are talking about the ed development of the educational system, we should talk about the intellectual property and the mechanisms of registering the innovations and how to involve the private sector and the development process because most of the legislative systems, they had big gaps, and we know it. So we should reconsider our legislations in order to cover all of these components mentioned. Also connecting the universities and the research centers and the private sectors with the decision makers is a necessity. It should be taken into consideration in order to create different mechanisms for networking in order to guarantee the general development, then that can be reflected in the educational system. The technology is very important, useful, but it is not the objective. It's a mean. That's why I think, in my point of view, that the technology might be the window for the poor countries in order to see and to reach what they are hoping for to enhance and to qualify their educational outputs. According to what we have seen yesterday, actually, I see that the technology might have a very important function in order to erase the literacy in the Arab world. We all know that the number of the literate people in the Arab countries between the 70 to 80 million, which is around a quarter of the population of the here, a whole Arab nation. And here I'm talking about the uh, alphabetical uh, literacy. So how about digital literacy? Here we are talking about half of the, half of the people. And there is no way to develop this huge number except by using different technologies of communication and using them in different functions in order to improve. So th these are some of the observations regarding the illiteracy that I have mentioned in this important summit. What is left to say is that the Arab a league for culture and science is heading to have an Arabian summit, which is the first one in, in Tunis Indonesia. Maybe it might be held in November or December of this year. That is aiming at involving the Ministry of Education and Higher Education and Science and Research and some of the companies in the private se sector and some research centers and some the Ara Arabian brains in the, who are living in the West. Because it's very important to mention, actually, the Arabs, they are losing around 20 billion annually by, by the immigration of the Arabian brains to the West because the, we failed to have them or to maintain them to retain them, sorry. We are losing around 20 million, sorry, 20 million dollars annually. Also, the Arab League for Science and Culture is involved in a project with a partnership with the State of uh, Ministry of uh, External Affairs in the United States in uh, writing a book which is talking about interpreting the curricula of the American institutions into Arabic, which is a try, help the Arabian 
countries in order to teach science in different aspects in Arabic, whether in applied sciences or the human sciences. At last, I would like to thank the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, represented by the Minister of Education, for hosting this event. And I thank you for listening to my speech. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.